Maybe you've heard the term before, Ford Tough. What does that even mean? Well, today, Ford sent me out here to look at their Ford Proving Grounds. This is a 4,000 acre piece of property where they test everything off-road, but they also said they're gonna take me inside of a building to see wind tunnels, to see winter testing. This is part of a series of seeing the off-road facilities of different manufacturers. If you haven't seen it yet, I have a video from Stuttgart, Germany, where I tested the Mercedes-Benz and saw all of their off-road facilities. We have to appreciate all the work that goes on behind the scenes that you don't even know about to make your car be safe on the road. Things that you'll likely never use inside of your vehicle, like different safety features and different off-road things that your car will do but in that one time that you need it, whether it's during a snowstorm or something crazy happens on a gravel road, it's nice to know that these manufacturers have put in the thousands of hours and the testing in these vehicles so that you can be a little bit safer or your family can be a little bit safer in a car. So I wanna see cars pushed to the limits. Let's see what this thing's all about. Let's go. We're going in. If you hear that noise, we have misters or water that is being sprayed inside of the room. And of course, what happens to water when it's five degrees below zero? It turns into snow. And within one hour, it can do one inch of snow on the entire car. You need to be able to test this to make sure that after sitting in days of freezing cold weather, how well does that open? Also with electric cars, there is a ton of drain with the batteries. You have to keep the batteries at a certain temperature. In order to do that, you have to run liquids throughout the battery. And so by putting a car inside of here and testing it for a few days, or you can get an idea of what the tech will do inside of here and how efficient it is. It's pretty cold in here, so I'm gonna go out. I'm not wearing my gloves. All right, so my hands are red. They're freezing, literally. This room right here is heating to get ready for a car to be in here. It's 97 degrees in here. This room can go up to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. I should have worn gloves in there. The Ford people told me to wear gloves and I did not. One of the first videos that we ever filmed on our channel was going up to Alaska where my wife is from and it got down to 65 below zero for Christmas. And so we went outside a bunch of times and filmed stuff and our hands were freezing. Lincoln and I walked over to the lake for 10 minutes and walked back without gloves and I thought my fingers were gonna fall off. So, oh, look at it break in my hand, see that? Okay, look at this bubble. Lincoln caught this bubble. Okay, you think I can pick it up? It's been there for a long time. It breaks me. Oh boy, it just broke. It's like a contact lens. Look at that. <sighs> That's the last time these fingers have been that cold. One small detail that I really like, this is how you get into it. There's actually a latch and you pull on this because your fingers are not freezing cold. But once you're inside of it and you need to escape, you push the escape button and that's how it opens. This is a real life astronaut. Dr. Proctor has flown on the Inspiration4 with SpaceX, right? That's correct, okay, with SpaceX. So let's get you inside of the warm room. Ooh, gotta warm up. <laughs> what does that cold feel like compared to being in space? Well, luckily when you're in a Dragon capsule, it's climate controlled because I'm from Phoenix. I'm a sun devil, so I like it warm. It reminded me of why I no longer live in a snowy state. <laughs> <laughs> I was very cozy when I was in space. Perfect. All right, the next test, cold weather driving test. We've got a Ford Bronco inside of here. It is a gas car, so it's all connected, so the exhaust all goes out. But we're gonna run the wind. This is actually a wind tunnel. I've always wanted to be inside of a wind tunnel. We're about to go in it. This is everything, all the stats, everything. If I push one of these buttons right now, that car, that Bronco's gonna start driving, so we're not gonna do that. But for this test, we're gonna go 40 mile an hour wind. Just like the room that we were just in, it's gonna be five below zero. There's a robot inside of the car driving the car. Now, it's not like the robot you think of with like a face and everything, because it turns out most robots, you don't need to have a full human body that's really inefficient. All right, now there's the wind tunnel. I can feel it now that I'm on this side. If I stand right here, no wind. As soon as I come right here, that is cold. Oh. Yeah, no thanks. How cold is it in the wind? Watch my breath. <laughs> this right here is called a dyno, and this is where you have the car drive. So all wheel drive, you've got the front and the back, and then you also, just in case it ever gets off the dyno, you've got these chains and it is all chained up so that the thing does not just drive off. You've got them on the front and on the back. All right, I'm the last one inside of this room. I think that means I need to leave. That 
is actually kind of frightening. <laughs> that wind tunnel's crazy. All right, here goes the wheels. The robot is now driving the vehicle. Time to accelerate. All right, you know it's getting serious. We have killed the lights inside of the control room. We are getting set up. They've set up the nozzles, so it's going to start snowing inside of there. You're ready, Steve. Ready? Yeah. Right, ready, guys. Oh, yeah. Right, we're gonna get a closer look in here. Yeah, that looks like winter. I mean, that looks like a big storm right there, but in reality, this is just 40 mile an hour of wind and snow that's coming directly at the Ford Bronco. They can take this and bump it up to 150 miles an hour of wind and snow just blasting the vehicle. Welcome to the wind tunnel. It's hard to show you on camera like how big this place actually is, but this is one of the largest car testing wind tunnels in the entire world. This is where they do the aerodynamic testing, which you know is super important for electric cars because the better the aerodynamics are of the car, the better the range you get, the smaller battery you can get inside of the car, or the more miles that you can drive on your vehicle. And it can go up to 200 miles per hour with the wind. They're testing cars inside of here that haven't even come out yet, like 2027, 2028 vehicles. They bring them in here and test them out. If you remember in the last wind tunnel, there were a bunch of chains that were in the front of the car. Well, this has to be aerodynamic. So you've got that metal grip right there and that metal grip right there. There's four of them underneath the car and they can be attached within five minutes so that they can test out any of these vehicles. All right, good news. We asked if we could go see the actual like turbine and they're like, yeah, why not? So we're gonna go walk down into the tunnel right now and see where these turbines are. Oh, a step, yep, that's, that is easy to miss. Okay, the wind all turns. That's trippy. That is trippy. <laughs> Where are we going right now? This is great. Okay, look. Oh, there it is. I see it. Okay. So this will uh, <laughs> stop debris from flying into the turbine. Makes sense. Oh, wow. 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 That is massive. That is the type of fan that you need in order to generate 200 mile an hour wind speed. It just circulates through this tunnel just over and over again. I don't want to get stuck in here. What's inside of this turbine? I've been underneath the Hoover Dam and I've seen the way that they build the big turbines under there. This. Oh, I see how it works. It's like a jet at the end. It's aerodynamic and it's got this long tail on it. Oh wow. Yeah, and it says Ford on the end. Of course it does. Oh, that's rad. That is something to see. All right, so right now the car is going 132 kilometers an hour, around 80 miles an hour, and it's hard to tell. It's a wind tunnel. You can't really see the wind unless there's some sort of smoke in there, but the wheels are also turning. The car is driving the same speed as what the wind is blowing. And then there's also a belt that's running underneath the car, like a treadmill, that's going the same speed also, just to eliminate some of the drag and to make sure that the numbers are specific. That's everything that it's measuring right there. You can see how efficient or inefficient this big old 2018 Mustang is. Maybe some of you in the comments are smarter than me and you can tell me how good or how bad this car is. Check it out. This is what I'm about to go inside of. This is like a real simulator. It's almost like I'm an astronaut, but instead I'm gonna be driving a Ford. This is Ford's virtual racing simulator, and they're able to test out a lot of different things indoors in the safety of this machine. I'm excited to try this out. Just pop in like normal car then? Pop in normal car, okay. yeah. All right, it's really trippy once you're inside of the vehicle. You can look out in all directions and you see road. It feels quite real. Okay, well, there we are, right around 60. <laughs> it's kind of trippy because you can see the lanes. I'm gonna get over to the other lane. Oh, yeah. oh you can feel it when, I, when I'm a little aggressive with it and you're going 60 miles an hour. That's about the max steer that we can handle. Yeah, okay, I sped up. It's really trippy because after you're in here for like a minute or two, you start to just feel like you're actually driving on a road. I know it's computer generated and all that, but the car is lifting up, it's turning, it's doing all the different motions that feel like a real car. You're in a cockpit, in a driver's seat of a car, 
it all looks so real. We are now on a road in Arizona. Looks very familiar. This is where Ford has their proving grounds. It's a laser scanned road and it feels legit. Every single bump that you feel are simulating real bumps in the road. We're gonna have you uh, hit this small red button and bring it down here. I can see how you get nauseous in this. Now we're gonna go to the real proving grounds. They're able to simulate 10 years or 150,000 miles of use on one of these cars or trucks that you're seeing drive around in as little as three months. So they go autonomously and they just drive. They go 24 hours a day and they just go out there and drive and somebody just monitors them. How steep of a grade is the steepest grade in America? I'm gonna let you put that in the comments right now. I'm gonna tell you in a few minutes. Well, we're gonna go up this mountain. This is the tallest point in this entire county, right there. That's it, that's the tallest point. This is a 29% grade hill. This Ford Lightning is gonna go down the hill and then hopefully come pick me up and then we're gonna go on a ride down this and see what it looks like. Oh, they're going fast. Electric cars are incredibly good at going up and down steep hills. They have the regenerative braking with the motors built into the tires. Definitely huge advantage going up and down steep hills like this 29% grade in an electric vehicle. To show you how steep it is, I'm gonna keep this thing balanced as it goes by. This is balanced, this is even. That's what a 29% grade looks like. Time to go down this part of Michigan's biggest mountain right now. We are not in Utah anymore. Oh, yep, we can feel the steepness of that. Here we go. Whoop, right at the bottom. And a big hill, oh, it's like a jump. <laughs> Safety helmet on. Don't think we're gonna need it today. The guy that I'm riding with has driven over 500 miles on this track. He developed this. He brought a tractor out here and was digging the track himself and made this track. So I think he could do this with his eyes closed. It's rally mode. All right, Ford Maki, let's do this. All right, and we'll be going to the right at the fork up there so you're not shocked. <laughs> Woo -hoo! There we go. Oh, sideways, we're going sideways. So we did 500 miles of that. 500 miles of that you've done. All on one car. All right, so question for you. If you had to go up against Vaughn Gittin Jr., do you think <laughs> you would have the faster time on this track? <laughs> well, I've ridden with Vaughn. Yeah. Uh, it would be Vaughn. <laughs> so, but I'd right. give him a run He's... for his money, so yep. yeah. yeah. No, wait, Vaughn's a great guy. He was he was with us at the one event, so it was fun to ride with him. So. I appreciate the yep. humility. Yep. He probably could take Vaughn. So, Vaughn, we need a test. We need a time test. <laughs> I think he can take it. Hey, Vaughn. <laughs> when people think of proving grounds, at least in my mind, I think of just like a stretch of road that you just drive down and you drive around in circles, like an Indy 500 track. But it's nothing like that here. Yes, they do have tracks that are straight and you can go really fast and hit the corners. But the off-road testing for things like the Bronco has to be intense. So this is a boulder track right here. They've got the small boulders on the side and then they've got the big boulders over here on the outside. And this thing's just gonna climb right up it. The other important thing is the Bronco is used in so many off-road situations and a lot of the winter testing done at these vehicles are out in Moab, Utah or somewhere warm and a lot of times it's very remote places where they don't have access to the tools and sometimes they don't even have cell phone service to be able to call their technicians to be like, hey, this is going wrong, what's happening here? So out here they've created some tools like this concrete barrier spot to simulate what they're going to see in Moab and some of these other places. Does the control arm break? Is there something wrong with the vehicle that we need to be prepared for for when we go out to the desert? You can tell if this was an electric vehicle, you could creep up the hill. I've been in a lot of electric vehicles and gone up steep, rocky things like this. And it's so helpful to have that regenerative braking and also to have that acceleration that just kind of creeps over things where with the gas Bronco, the acceleration, you can see him hitting the brakes. You gotta back up and accelerate a little bit. It's just another advantage to having an electric vehicle for off-road situations versus a gas vehicle. And yes, I'm biased on that. I am very muddy. My shoes, my pants, my GoPro, Michigan Proving Grounds. I never thought I'd be able to come here and see this. Thanks Ford for letting me see this. This was not a sponsored video, but really cool event. Let me know what you guys liked about this place. <laughs> that was an impressive one. He took an aggressive line this time over, time over the biggest boulders and 
that was like bottomed out basically and it still made it over. The Bronco's impressive. Like I do feel bad for Jeep manufacturers and Stellantis because Jeep sales are definitely down and Broncos are up because this thing is such a good off-road beast and it's really capable and it has high quality that you don't have to fix things as much. Um, I have some friends that have this and such a good vehicle. I don't know why, but it's kind of cool that an astronaut is going under that right now. Like she's legit an astronaut. That totally makes sense. That's no brakes on this car. <laughs> 